Hello everyone, this is Northwind here, and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. Uh, in the last episode, we explored some of the Seamstresses Union, uh, the VIP area, and we went through Coyote's private quarters, found out that she is actually meeting with her boyfriend Paco at Pike's Place, Marketplace. Um, apparently she got some zebra meat there, and we got some new spells from Noog, and uh, we've got the cleaning guy here who I'm sure is more than he seems but right now we have to actually talk to Mrs. Kubota. Kubota? Kubota? I'm not quite sure how to say her name. How can I help you? Do you know Paco? He's a ganger. Member of the Cutters. He's a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warn Coyote against getting too attached to that type. They don't live wrong. Have you heard of Maury's Meat Emporium? Her face twists with disgust. No, I am a vegetarian. Did you know Jim sold a gun to Coyote recently. It'd be more of a surprise if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with most of the troublemakers, but around here, you need a gun just to take the trash out to the dumpster. Coyote had a date with Paco at Pike's Place Market in the next half hour. If you would go down there, it might bring me some peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be able to get you there in time. Gambate kudasai. Good luck. I don't know. It's something about, you know, please something. I don't, I don't really know much Japanese, sorry. Sorry! Alright, well, we're gonna actually head to... Oh, come on. We're gonna head down here and catch this cab. We have got... Well, I'm actually... Wait, before I go, let's talk to, to Jin here. See if we can find out why she bought a gun. Did you sell Browning Max Power to Coyote, the bartender? Hey, guy, I'm discreet. I don't talk about my clients or what they buy. Bad for biz. However, I'm sure she would recommend me if she was a customer which I'm not saying she is. She can't recommend you if she's dead. Did she say anything about why she wanted it? All she said was she was looking for stopping power. He's back on the drama. Need some hardware? No thanks. I got plenty of hardware. Although I do need to heal. I wish there was a way for me to... Uh... There's got to be a way for me to actually heal from a menu somewhere. Got to be. Because I don't think... Can I heal with that? Nope. Okay, forget it. Forget it. We're going to go take a cab to the Pike's Place Marketplace. Yes, 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 yes. I have been to the Pike's Place Marketplace. It is pretty cool. You catch a cab from the tourist build of Pike's Place Market in a mercifully quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, light, lighted streets, which I'm sorry is lit streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many of these, arcologies are home. For others, they're hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for its fish monitors, Pike's Place Market has been around since the early 1900s, overlooking the bay. Now, it's a market for all things, illegal and illegal. A melting pot of the haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. All right, well, I don't have much in the way of money. I spent all of it on magic and the clothes that I'm wearing. Okay, so we've got Patrick over here. And nothing else that I can see, because I can't go that way which means I'm going to have to go around that way. But we need to find out more about this Universal Brotherhood. What's he have to say? Come here, Patrick. The handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes you with his full, completely uninvited attention. Sir, you are a beautiful human, but you could be so much more. What are you selling? I'm not selling anything. We are giving away the secrets to a more fulfilling, happy, and productive life. Okay, I'll bite. What are the secrets to a more fulfilling, happy, and productive life? The first step is to simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian will be speaking about the importance of family in the sixth world. Please join us tomorrow, and the secrets to a better life shall be revealed to you. He smiles and turns back to the crowd. Well, I think I'll probably end up that at that uh, talk. But not because I want to. Refurbished flowers for sale. What we got here. We got. Oh, there's Paco. We're going to check Paco out, but first I'm going to see if there's anything else in this general area. 
Whoa, 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 that's... Really... Strong, like... Um, I don't think... I think these are shops? But there doesn't appear to be anybody around. Is it too late at night? You'd figure somebody would be around here at all times. Alright, well, let's go and talk to Paco. Come here, Paco. Hey, you seen? <laughs> the kid in front of you sports the trademark yellow of the Cutters gang. Young, clean-shaven, he stands like he owns the streets and everyone on it. He seems distracted, though, glancing around with increasing agitation. He looks over as you approach. Watch yourself. What you want? You wouldn't happen to be looking for Coyote, would you? That's none of your fragging business. Who the hell are you? I'm Archon. I'm looking for Coyote. I need to ask her some questions. And I need you to tell me why you think that's my problem. I'm not her boss. Find her yourself. I was just at the Union. She's missed two shifts, and Mrs. Kubota hasn't been able to reach her on calm. The tough guy quag swagger seems to drain out of Paco. The cutter is gone, and before you stands a kid in a yellow jacket that isn't quite fit. Coyote's missing? Oh, man. That would explain... She was supposed to meet me here over an hour ago. Look, sorry for getting in your face like that. What else do you know? If she's missing, I need to find her. Do you know what fix your name Mr. Delilah? Coyote had a meeting with him a few days ago. I know of him, sure. Blake doesn't allow any cutters to take the side gigs, though. So I got reason to deal with him. I got no reason to deal with him. Coyote hasn't said anything about it. Taking new work. Wait a minute. Drek, I know where she went. Damn, why wouldn't she wait? Damn it. Paco, slow down. Where did she go? The Royal Apartments. The landlord, Stevie J, runs a drug ring out of that hellhole. Coyote grew up there. Doesn't like to talk about it much. She's been looking for a way to settle the score with that guy for years. A few days back, I heard Mr. Delilah was looking for runners to steal some sort of item out from under Stevie J's nose. She must have taken the job. I'm sure of it. And if this thug's caught her... There's a grim determination in Paco's eyes. I'm going over there. You coming? I'm in. Don't worry. We'll get her back. Damn right we will. All right. Looks like I got a ganger. Find Mari's Meat Emporium. Nope, I don't want to go that way. I want to do this first. I want to see what's over here before I do anything else. Uh, can I go this way? Doesn't look like it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Alright, so... I don't see anything revolving Meat Market, but I'm checking the signs. Oh, we got somebody here. Manny. Let's see what Manny has to say. Come here, Manny. The small meat stand presents an enormous diversity of dead animals, from cow and canines to exotic and paranormal. The pictures on the back of the stand feature a much older version of the man in front of you. As soon as he notices Paco, the proprietor's eyes become hard and angry. What do you want? You know we can't afford more. Relax, man. My friend just has question. Everything cool here? Yeah, everything's swell. Manny continues to stare daggers in Paco's direction. The name's Mandy. Now, what do you want? What would someone want to buy zebra meat for? Some people eat it, but I wouldn't recommend that. Tough as nails. We mostly sell it to corp security teams who use it to reward their hellhounds. The flamers go crazy for the stuff for some reason. Aw, oh, Drek, that's why Coyote wanted zebra meat. Everyone talks about the pet hellhound Stevie J keeps locked up somewhere in the Royale, and if she never picked it up... Whatever. Anything else? I have this order. You still got it? I'll look it up. Yeah, I got it right here. Two days past the pickup time. Didn't think anyone was going to come for it. Here, it's all yours now. What's your problem with Paco? Why don't you ask him? What the hell's that supposed to mean? It means that your gang likes to stroll through here and relieve us merchants of our new yen. My dad stood up to them, and he's still in the hospital. Look, that's not my problem. I'm at the bottom of the cutter ranks anyway. I couldn't do dreck about that even if I wanted to. Tell that to my dad. I don't have time for this. We need to find Coyote. You're right, Paco. Let's get going. All right. So we have zebra meat, which we are going to use. What? What do we got here? Officer Landon. As if your as your eyes adjust to the flashing light, you spot the body of a woman dead on the pavement behind the police line. Panic spreads across Paco's weights. Oh, oh no! Is that Coyote? This isn't happening. God damn it. Pull yourself together. Take a look. Is that her? Paco steps forward and breathes a huge sigh of relief. No, no, it's not her. Thank God. Look, let's not hang out here too long, all right? Too many Lone Star pigs around. 
Paco looks over at the victim again. It's too bad. Whatever happened here, I'm not going to let anything like this happen to Coyote. All right, well, I still want to talk to this officer. Oh, he took her eyes? A tall and motionless Lone Star officer blocks entry to the grime scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of Organ Grinder's coroner, Dresden. This is an active Lone Star investigation. Please step away from the barrier. I'm here to see Coroner Dresden. And who might you be? It's all right, officer. He's with me. Dresden steps up to this barrier with a warm gift, grin. The officer looks at you with poorly concealed skepticism. Okay, then. Make it quick. All right. Well, we can at least check out the body. Lying on the pavement is the body of a young human female. Her eyes have been gouged cleanly out, and you notice a string of bite marks along her left arm. Okay. Uh, let's talk to the officer first. Yeah, let's just walk right over the body. Can we talk to him? Officer Aguirre, plainclothes Lone Star officer before you sparks a tacky hat and a crooked grin. So you're the one who's working with that dead man, huh? McCluskey warned us you might be sniffing around after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Officer Aguirre, pleased to meet you. Now seeing as this crime scene's going nowhere fast, what can we do for you? Uh, what can you tell me about the murder? Not much, really. We know it was about three hours ago, and we know the rise had been surgically removed. Didn't need Dresden to figure that much out. He's been looking at the body, though, so he might have more. Me? I've been scanning the rest of the scene and looking for witnesses. But no luck so far. Dem Ripper might as, be, might as well be a ghost. Take it you and McCluskey don't exactly see eye to eye? Let's just say that McCluskey and I have conflicting interests. Do you have any leads on what I should know about? Ha! <laughs> Plenty, if you ask McCluskey. But the truth is, we're as clueless as you probably are. Alright, well, thanks for your time. Hey, hold on a minute. You haven't put in a donation for the Lonely Orphans Fund. The Lonely Orphans Fund? Yeah, I see. You make a contribution to the fund, I put you on a list, and let you know the next time we find any orphans. Think you might be interested? Well, I'm always interested in finding out any new orphans that you might discover. Excellent. Shall we say 300 New Year? New Yen? Uh... I don't have 300 New Yen. I don't have 100 New Yen. Can't afford that. Count me out. So what brings you out here? Hot on the trail of a dead man's killer? Coincidence, believe it or not. I take it I've stumbled across another Ripper murder. Yeah, that's what it looks like. As you can see, the Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. I gotta hand it to him. Our Rippers knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. What do you know about the victim? Well, not much. Dresden scratches his head absentmindedly, probably breaking some sort of sanitation protocol. She's been dead for about three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked out of the shutter stuffer shack just around the corner. Looks like she was just leaving work when it happened. Can you tell if she was subdued in some way before her eyes were removed? That's the strange thing. There don't seem to be any signs of the struggle. Not a single bruise on her body. Yet she was clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of a, a blood loss shortly thereafter. As to what knocked her out? I won't know until we run some tests back at the lab. I thought you were in the Redmond franchise. Isn't Pike Place a little far from home? Yeah, well, I don't really mind the change of scenery. <laughs> the corner for the downtown branch is out on maternity, so I told management that I'd cover for her in this one. Plus, I want this sicko caught. What about the bites on her arm? Ah, completely unrelated. It appears some wild dogs dragged her body out here from the alley sometime after her death. Any sign of magic use here? There was evidence of an unusual explosion in the alley where Sam died. Now, there's an interesting thought. No, nothing obvious, though. I'm sure when McCluskey shows up, he'll call it in a, a full magical forensics team, though, just to be sure. So, the Ripper takes Sam Watts's liver and this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort, I suppose. Probably some symbolic significance to the killer. Beyond that, I couldn't speculate. Alright, that's enough. Hey, I figured I'd help you, help you out. There's a better chance to get this scumbag off the street a little sooner. McCluskey wants the Ripper in a cell, sure, but he couldn't care less if he takes another dozen murders. Good luck out here, huh? Speaking of McCluskey, you should probably get going soon before he shows up. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, but I want to talk to this guy. The elf standing before you may possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, formal jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie gives him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. He notices you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Hello there, stranger. Might I inquire, do you know of which the organ grinder's facility this body will be removed to? Why would you want to know something like that? The elf giggles, a strange high-pitched warble you could not, not expect to emerge from this misshapen face. Oh, just a hobby. Never mind that, though. A good evening to you and your friend, the coroner. That 
is a creepy guy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. See, I wish I had the money, because I can't exactly go back and try to bribe this guy now. Uh, I do have some karma, but not much. And definitely not enough that I can buy another level of spell casting, but soon. I'd like to get that up as high as possible, and then I'll start working on dodge and biotech. Um, but first I need some money. Uh, that is going to take me the end of uh, this episode, though. I'm going to start heading in my search for the Royale. Some BTL. BTL is better than life. That's, uh, I guess, like sim stuff where you can experience different things. You ever see the movie Strange Days? I guess it's kind of like that. Um, but anyhow, that's going to be the end for this episode. I'll definitely uh, see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye now. <laughs>